Yeah, it's turkey weekend here in Canada, so my turkey is brining away. We've been brining for the past 14 hours, and we've got thyme, bay leaf, parsley, pimento pepper, black pepper, salt, and brown sugar. Yeah, I'm gonna take that out, rinse it out, wash it, air dry it, and then into the oven. Yeah, I'm doing my turkey early, because tomorrow I wanna focus on a prime rib roast. All right, so the steps, we brined it overnight and that salt, sugar, thyme, bay leaf, parsley, pimento pepper, and black pepper and water, right? You brined it, took it out, you pat it dry. In the cavity there, we got some herbage, some thyme and some parsley. Don't overdo it. Down here, we've got celery, onion, and carrots that's going to create a bed because i'm going to put some chicken stock in there and i don't want the chicken stock touching the bird it's going to go into a a, a low oven 300 burp, burp, let me tell you bam bam right 325 that's fahrenheit don't get scared it is not celsius um middle rack uncovered 15 minutes per pound now here's the thing you're trying to get about 160 165 internal temperature but we also want to get a lovely color if you find that it's yeah instagram cut me off there what i was going to say if you start seeing dark spots before it's done so at the two hour mark you're going to start seeing it going dark and shiny what you want to do then is get some foil and cover those areas those specific areas now if you have a v-shaped rack which would lift the bird and allow air circulation let me see my hand around that's much better i man don't have a rack so that is why I employ the use of carrots, celery, and onion. Now, the vibes. So this I'm going to allow to rest and then carve it up. And tomorrow, I've got the juices in that pot there from the bottom there. And that's going to be our best gravy. But for now, hold tight. More to come tomorrow. Remember, we're doing that prime rib tomorrow. Huh? Stay tuned. You're going to love that one. I had a question earlier about brining and why brine. Brine will allow the salt and whatever flavors to go deep within the meat of the turkey giving you a more moist turkey when it's all done so that is the reason for brining but remember brine is equal parts sugar and salt in my case i went in with pimento peppers and and um black peppercorns thyme bay leaf and all that but remember to rinse that turkey off proper before you toss it in the oven eh? because i want that thing to be over salty but it's a great way to infuse flavor into the bird all right hola mi gentes prime rib now this one here i kind of cheaped out and this one doesn't have the bones in there thus the celery and the carrot on the bottom there but what you're seeing in my bowl here i had mixed about three tablespoons of soft butter about a tablespoon of herb de provence a quarter teaspoon uh, about a half a teaspoon of black pepper about a half a teaspoon of rosemary and let me show you if i have it still here this is the last of that organic garlic i brought back from quebec and you're gonna mince that up finely and you're gonna mix that butter all together and then you're gonna slather it all over your prime rib now here's the thing salt it after so the salt will stick on all that butter and all that goodness there now the little science, and I know Caribbean people will not want a medium roast, but the science behind a medium roast, crank up your oven to 500 degrees. Then using the weight of your rib roast, for every pound, you will stay in that 500 degree range for five minutes. Listen to me, every pound equals five minutes, round it up as well too. After the the time has expired at 500 degrees, according to your weight, turn off the oven completely. Do not, you see that door? Don't open the door, leave it in there, middle rack for two hours. Now go back and replay this if you guys kind of confused, but for every pound, five minutes at 500 degrees, turn off the oven, leave it shut, leave it for two hours. Irene, but look at that niceness now. Yeah, one more quick one. Now, if you have a rib roast, if, so if the ribs are still on there, the ribs have been removed on this one, and I want it off the bottom of the uh, baking dish, thus the reason for the celery and the carrot. But all of that is gonna, oh boy, I'm telling you, we eating like kings and queens and pharaohs. 
I'm telling you, Maharaj. And now I'm working on the base for my stuffing. So a ton of butter in there. So maybe about three tablespoons of salted butter, two large onions, three stalks of celery. We've got parsley in there. We've got thyme in there. We've got little tiny pieces of apple, dried cranberries, herb de Provence, um, sage, salt, black pepper, some fresh ground black pepper. And that's going to sweat down to the side. Oh, and you see that little orange you see in there? That is the Trinbagonian in me. And that there is pimento peppers. Straight out of the garden. So this is the base. Some good chicken stock is going to go in there. Then we're going to mix everything into old steel bread. And then into the oven. Hey, Papa Yo, is beer niceness out here this rounds. And I've put the um, that chicken stock in there. Really good chicken stock. Eh? Nothing too high in sodium either. And over here, I have the bread on a sheet pan. It's been, well, I rip it all up and it's nice and dry. The key is dry pieces of bread because that is going to soak in there. And that is where that stuff in it's going to go pow pow. I'm telling you, man, you got to air dry it though. So, a couple of days old, man. And if you're like me and you're running out of roasting pans, why not use your cast iron enamel pots? They're made for that. They're made for that on stovetop, oven, everything. So it's all set up. And all I'm going to do later on, pop this into the oven and we've got stuffing. And you see how nice and moist that is? That means later on we're going to get away. I don't have to tell all you. All you understand already. And using the little math equation that I gave you all there, this is the finished product. So I'm gonna allow that. Nah, it doesn't need to rest because remember it's been resting for two hours in that in that warm oven. So you can carve it right away. And those drippings down there, that's gonna be the base for my gravy. Yeah, so I'm working on Brussels sprouts now. It's quite a bit here, but once once it roasts down, it's gonna shrink up and it's pretty basic i kept it basic a good olive oil salt black pepper and shaved garlic you'll see how thin i shaved the garlic there just to add a nice little different dimension and flavor to it now it's not going to end there once it comes out of the oven i want it nice and charred i've got some honey that i brought back from quebec that's spring honey and i'm going to drizzle on a good balsamic on there so honey balsamic roasted Brussels sprouts. Rock -a -tong -tong. Hey. Yeah, so beets, yellow beets and carrots. In here I got some sea salt, some black pepper, some olive oil, some honey, and the juice of a tangerine. So I get a little acid citrus kick from that. But that's gonna go into the oven sooner or later as well to to roast off. Fresh out of the oven. And you know that's pure sweetness there, but as I said, I've got my little balsamic that I'm just gonna drizzle on there. And remember there's that honey in there as well too. While it's still warm is when you want to be doing this, yeah? I just pulled these out of the oven, roasted to perfection. Got a nice little charring and all that stuff like that. Roasted beets, and those are yellow beets or orange beets, along with carrots. And we've got that, um, we got some olive oil in there. We've got some maple syrup. I finished it off with some scallions there. Salt, black pepper, some mandarin, what's it, man? Tangerine juice as well, too. So it's real nice, is there too. And I've got the potato going there, but for now we've got green beans. Very simple, butter, olive oil, shallot, salt, and black pepper. Nothing too fancy with this one here. But I'm going to hit that a toss and, you know, we try not to overcook it. And the key to good potatoes, in my humble opinion, start with good potatoes. I love Yukon Gold. Boil them in salted water, just black pepper. I'm keeping it simple today. I'm not giving all your Uncle Chris famous creamy potatoes. Today, you know where you're going? Whipped potatoes. So I'm going to mash them. Then I'm going in with the electric little mixer thing. Vee, vee, vee. Yep. 
that's my special effects there but anyhow for now we're mashing then milk and we're gonna whip them and you can see the beans are coming together nicely one ingredient I added in there a little bit of pepper flakes and these are just about good you know just look how nice son oh papa yes you're getting on son and here I have butter we've got diced ham which we got to crispy little edges we added half of an onion and to that we're gonna go in with fresh shell peas not the frozen variety but the fresh stuff I'm gonna top it up with some sea salt some black pepper and some more butter put the lid on there let that steam cook down let me tell you the drama kind of you see you see that smoky flavor from that bacon boy and the sweetness from that onion hey. and I know you all are wondering about gravy if we shift our attention to over here this is the turkey gravy I'm still reducing it and I've got some wild mushrooms in there as well and in the back we've got that jus for the roast beef now the color doesn't look all that great back there but I'm telling you the flavor on that is just pow pow pow